and your bulletin is written as the Nicene Creed. So we'll do the Apostles' Creed because it's going to be easier. Because I got the one. All right. Any questions as to what we're doing today? All right. Let's get started. Uh, it was a beautiful prelude, Ellen, by the way. And now the prayer of the day, which is not written in here. Let us pray. Almighty God, source of every blessing, your gracious goodness comes to us anew every day. By the work of your spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first reading of the day The days were surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them to the land to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant which they broke. Though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to one another, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. For the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I forgive their iniquity, and remember their sin no more. Now we will read together. Psalm 46, found on pages 236 and 237. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, but we will be moved, and we will not be troubled into the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble at its tumult. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be overthrown. God shall help her in the great day. The nations make much ado. The kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now and look upon the works of the Lord, what awesome things he has done on earth. It is he who makes war to cease in all the world. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shield of fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The second lesson. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth be silenced, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are all now justified by his grace as a gift, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God put forth as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did, not, he did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous, and that he justifies the one he justifies who has faith in Jesus. 
then what becomes a boasting? Is it excluded? By what law? By what works? By that of works? No, but by that of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The Holy... The church began to tell its members that they have to uphold the Ten Commandments. 
and the rest of the law found in the New Old Testament before we can be the Lord's people. And forgiveness from the Lord would only come through confession and penance or through special offerings to the church. Thus, we attempt to turn back to the Old Covenant. We find it easier and simpler to understand, but impossible to uphold. In reading Romans, Luther found a heart to have found the heart of the gospel within Paul's words. We all fail to fulfill the Old Covenant, but Jesus fulfills the New Covenant for us and declares that his actions have made us righteous and worthy of inclusion in the kingdom of God through the sacrament of baptism. Therefore, we do not boast of what we do for God. We boast of what God has done for us through the death and resurrection of Jesus. Some of you may be carrying reminders of the new covenant with you right now. If you're wearing a cross on your clothing around your neck, in a tattoo, on a piece of jewelry, you have a reminder of this new covenant by which we receive forgiveness, righteousness, and promises of resurrection and eternal life. You have a reminder that Jesus has done the work to seal and fulfill this new covenant with the Lord's people, and that we are beneficiaries of this new covenant. For the world that glorifies self-sufficiency and the sense of earning what we have, we proclaim good news. The Lord is our God and welcomes us as the Lord's people, not because we have earned our place in the kingdom, but because the Lord loves us so much that the Lord died on the cross and rose to new life to make us righteous and declare us worthy to be people of God. We do not earn this title, and we cannot earn this title. It can only be given to us, and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit freely make us righteous and give us the title of the people of God out of their great love out of their great love for us. Amen. You all want to stand up, we'll pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share the sign of the peace safely. children of the light and of the day, and heirs of your everlasting inheritance. Remember, O Lord, according to the multitude of your mercies, your whole church and all who join with us in prayer, all your sisters and brothers, wherever they may be in your vast kingdom, who stand in need of your help and comfort. Pour out upon them the riches of your mercy, so that we, redeemed in soul and body and steadfast in faith, may ever praise your wonderful and holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and always, through all ages and ages. Amen. With the confidence in God's grace and mercy, 
Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Renew and inspire the church in the freedom of the gospel, O Lord. Where the church is in error, reform it. Where the church speaks your truth, strengthen it. Where the church is divided, unify it. Ignite in us the working of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the earth changes, as mountains shake and waters roar, may we care for this planet as a holy habitation for all things. Sustain all peoples and lands recovering from natural disasters of any kind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide areas of the world divided or traumatized by conflict, especially in our own land. Free all from slavery and human trafficking, and protect all in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear Release those living in bondage to debts, chronic pain, or addiction. Grant healing touch to those who are ill. Lord, in your mercy, hear In this family of faith, we give thanks for courageous voices that have remained firm in their commitment to the one who frees us from sin and death. Centered in your grace, unify us in the hope of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, even in death, you freed us and gave us a place in your house. We give thanks for our ancestors who have shown us truth and freedom, especially Martin Luther, and whose work for more the renewal of the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. Amen. Now we'll sing A Mighty Fortress is Our God, and, and let's really belt it out, because it is Reformation Sunday, and Martin Luther wrote this one.
love and serve the Lord. We are growing today. Growing love and